Welcome, everybody. Glad you're here at Eastview Christian Church. This is day number 15 in your reading of Joshua 24. It's been an exciting trip so far. I hope you keep reading and joining us. And uh, I'm just excited that many of you are here visiting today. Glad to have you. You might be freaked out by standing up and clapping and raising hands if you're not a follower, but this is what we believe and think about God, that he's worthy of all that. And so uh, that's, the, that's the first sermon that you get today. The second one's going to be in Joshua 24, duh, the Joshua 24 experience. And I, I would like to welcome all the people that are watching us online. You, you, I know that if you're here, you don't realize how many people are doing it. But I want to welcome Kim from Michigan, TR from Florida, Barb from Colorado, we're jealous, Mike from Maryland, Jeff from Normal, Lisa from Bro Men, get well, please. God bless you, Lisa Conley. And uh, Kara from Channel Islands, I don't, UK, sweet. England, that's amazing, huh? I can't believe the way that God, and of course, my lovely wife and my brand new granddaughter, Sarah and Sophie from Arizona. So if I seem a little jet lagged today, it's only because I am. It's all right, all right? But we're going we're gonna to get into the word today, and we, our Joshua 24 experience brings us this week to the word repent. And, and honestly, um, when most of us hear the word repent, we probably hear it with an exclamation point. It's not repent, it's repent. Because you, you like me, have probably been in, in uh, big cities, and you've seen those guys on the, on the street corners, and they're yelling, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand, repent. Or die. I mean, they get really serious. Nothing says good news like Jesus is coming and he's going to smoke you, right? <laughs> and they did, for some reason, these guys have taken it upon themselves to warn the world that repent, judgment is coming, repent, the end is near, repent or face the wrath of God. Some of them even will list the kinds of people who need to repent. I don't know if you see this, but uh, this is uh, off the internet. This guy's got a list. Here are the people that need pot smokers. Religious people, I love this, uh, sports nuts, <laughs> repent, especially if you're a Bears fan, repent, people. <laughs> Just kidding. Rebellious women, I don't even know what that means anyway. He just, wants, he just wants to let everybody know that they're bad and God needs them to repent. And for most of us, we've probably grown up thinking, oh, repent, this sermon's going to be one of those guilt-ridden sermons, and, and uh, the pastor's going to yell at us and tell us to repent from all our pagan ways, and, and uh, that's not quite true. Uh, the truth is, um, the problem with this message, repent or die, is that it's biblically true. That's the problem. The problem that I have with these guys, and if, if you're here and you go, I hate street preachers, I'm not a big fan of them either. But they're telling the truth. Even Jesus said when he was here on earth, unless you repent, you also will perish. He says the same thing. The problem is the methodology. Because I think repent is not something you do because you're scared to death. Repent is something you do because you're reaching towards life in Jesus Christ. This is good news, people. You get to repent. Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, John 3, 17 says, but that the world through him might be saved. This repentance sermon and this repentance theme that we're going to talk about this whole week as we go through Joshua 24 is a good news word. We get to turn around and run to Jesus. That's the good news I'm offering you today, and it's a baptism Sunday. We'll talk about all of this together. Let's read Joshua 24, starting in verse 22, and let's see what this repentance is all about. <clears throat> Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. And he said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve and his voice we will obey. Let me read that, that word again from verse 23. Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. Let's pray and ask the Lord to speak to us today. God, from the very front row to the balcony to people watching in England, watching all over the country and the world, God, I pray that now by your Holy Spirit's power, that you grab their heart, bring them into this, this teaching that we all need to hear about repentance. And may this be a day of glorious repentance from your people, maybe first time 
people coming to you to know you as their Lord and Savior. God, if someone here needs this sermon, would you preach it to them by your spirit? Give me the words to say. I'm not smart enough, not clever enough, but you, you can do anything. So get our hearts today, God. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, just in case you're with us today and your first time, uh, you've, you've not been here for the Joshua 24 experience, don't worry. Uh, you've only, you're only 15 days behind, and I'm going to catch you up right now. If you're like me and you, you've been in the Joshua 24 experience and you forget things easily, well, uh, then I'll, I'll bring you up today. We started by saying, let's remember what God has done, where we've been, and how we got here. And I hope you've, you take some time in the atrium on the lower level. There is a, there's a history wall of Eastview. It's really cool. We want to remember how God has gotten us from where we were to where we are. And then last week we passed out these tokens. And we said, hey, you need to choose. These tokens represented a, a false idol or a false god in our life. And so hopefully you've been praying about this all week and you've brought it back and we'll do something with that in just a little bit. But today we come to this word repent and you might be wondering, wait a minute, in verse 22 through 24 I don't see the word repent. And that's true, you don't see the word repent. But these two phrases, put away and incline, are parts of the whole repentance idea. When you repent, you put away something and you incline your heart to something. And that's what we're going to talk about today, and we're going to begin with this idea of putting something away. This word put away in the Hebrew language, and again, it's always important. I don't dumb this stuff down for you guys because you're not dumb, all right? It's always important to realize that this text was written 3,400 years ago in Hebrew. Joshua didn't speak English, all right? And so, uh, so in that original thing, when he said to those people, Hashiru, put away your gods. Get rid of them. Dispose of them. Uh, Put them behind. Turn aside. Change direction from the direction that you're going. Remember last week we said quite literally the people of God had come to church with idols on their person. They had little small bales and little small asteroids, maybe in their backpack, and they're going, hey, let's go to church today, and they're carrying their idols with them. And Joshua says, listen, God is not playing with you. You want to get serious about your relationship with God, you're going to have to put those things away. You're going to have to get rid of them, destroy them, turn away from them, change your direction. And this literal putting away occurs two other times when the people of God were getting really, really serious about their faith. If you want to look it up later, you can. Genesis chapter 35. Uh, Jacob is coming into the promised land this, uh, uh, 500 years before this story we find in Joshua. And Jacob, who becomes Israel, he's bringing his family in. And, and he's going, hey, God's getting ready to bless us. But y'all, put away your gods. Get rid of them. Because God's not, God's not going to share. So let's put them away. And then a few hundred years past where we're at right now in Joshua 24 in 1 Samuel 7, Samuel the prophet comes to the people and they're like, man, our lives are a mess. They're wrecked. We can't figure things out. What are we going to do? And Samuel says, put away your gods. Get rid of all the false gods, the fake gods, the foreign gods, and embrace, turn your heart to Jesus, to God. See, being a Christ follower is the same way. Some of us today need to practically put away some literal gods from our life. There's nothing wrong with having a car, but your car might be your God. You might just need to downsize. You might need to give it away. There's nothing wrong with having physical possessions that, that the Lord has blessed us with if we're thankful for them. But it just may be today that it's in the way of your relationship with God. you got to give something away today. Maybe it's a relationship. I believe there's lots of people in here who have a relationship that's either unchristian or non-Christian. It helps them, it leads them away from Christ. Some of you are dating people that are in the way of your relationship with God. Today is a great day to break up. (laughs) Maybe that's the idol you're carrying. Maybe it's relationship. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's drinking or shopping or eating or care for children. Are you putting them first? Today is a good day to sit your kids down and go, hey, you're not God. I'm not, for, I'm not worshiping you anymore. You're not in charge of this family. Then they'll throw a fit and you can ground them. It's fine. <laughs> Some of us need to put away social media, literally need to put away social media. I know you're not supposed to say that because pastors are supposed to be hip. 
and cool. You're like, oh, I'm FaceTime and Face, FaceTime. Uh, I'm not Facebook, that's for sure. I'm Twitter, Instagram, all that cool stuff that you guys do. But you know what? It's in the way for some of us. It's stuff that's just between us and God. If you're on Twitter all the time and you find yourself getting angry, get rid of it. If, if, you, if you find yourself wanting to just go, you stupid, and they say a bunch of harsh words, get rid of it. It's in the way of your relationship. If you're on Facebook or some other social media and you're envious or jealous of what you see in your peers and the people that you're following, you're going, oh, their life's awesome. I don't have an awesome life. I have low self-worth. Get rid of it. Some of you need to get rid of gaming like Fortnite. It's like taking over the world. <laughs> maybe that's what you need to put away. or Maybe it's sports or hobbies or travel. Just the sheer time we spend with these things. Media is a God that many of us need to get rid of. Now, you, you might be sitting there going, well, Pastor, you're a little perfect world. What about you? Yeah, I, I have to listen to these sermons all week long <laughs> before I give them to you and they go, tag, you're it. I've been repenting all week, and I, I can tell you uh, an illustration. About a month ago, I, I decided to get cool like my sons and, and, uh, and subscribe to Netflix Actually, it was a 30-day trial to Netflix. So cool. And my sons were watching, uh, you know, some, di some different series. They're really like soap operas for young people. But anyway, uh, and I found out, my wife and I together, that binge watching is a thing. <laughs> that you watch a uh, and you're like, oh, one more, boom, one more, boom, one more, boom. The way many of you guys like to watch sermons. I know. I know how it is. <laughs> can't turn this off. <laughs> but you know what I found in my life? I found in my life that I'm up at midnight and I got a meeting at 5 o'clock the next day. What am I doing? Not to mention the gratuitous nudity and the violence and the, and the, and the language. So you know what I did? I ended the 30-day trial. I'm not cool anymore. I lasted for 30, 30 days. I got rid of Netflix. And you might be sitting there saying, well, is that ne Netflix? Netflix is not a sin. And, and I'm not telling you to get rid of it. I'm just telling you, I want to follow Jesus. That's in the way. When are we going to get rid of the stuff that's in the way? Jo Joshua says to the people, put away these gods. And it happens in a literal sense, but it's also an internal thing. See, the problem with repentance is you often can't see it because it happens in here. That's, that's where we get the word repent in the New Testament. The word is metanoia in the Greek. It literally means to change your mind so that you change direction. I used to think I wanted all these gods and all these things, but no, I'm changing my mind. I want Jesus. I'm turning and following him, and it changes my direction. And these people, man, on this day of revival, Joshua is really laying it on. He's like, get rid of your gods, put them away. And they say, yes. Yes, we will put them away. We are witnesses, they say. I, I love this because he calls them to say it out loud. He, he calls them to give a testimony. Okay, you're witnesses against yourselves. And they go, we are witnesses. They state it. It's like a confession. <laughs> you know, back in the days when you went to a wedding ceremony, the people were not there just for free food and an open bar. <clears throat> they were there as witnesses. In fact, the old... The old way of doing a, 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 a wedding, I almost said funeral, wedding sermon uh, was that you just open, but we're gathered here today in the presence of God and these witnesses. Because you're all listening to the bride and the groom going, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. But you're there so that 10 years from now when they want to get a divorce, you're going, hey, wait a minute, you said, you promised, we witnessed it. And that happens in the spiritual sense as well in the congregation at church. We are here to give testimony to one another because faith eventually has to move from the heart to the mouth. That's what Romans talks about, Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We give witness to what we believe about Jesus Christ. And the way that we do that, are there's some visible expressions I can't read your heart today. I don't know what's in your heart. Maybe some of you don't even know what's in your heart, but God knows what he, what's in your heart. There is a way to express what's going on in here. That's why we come to Baptism Sunday. Baptism Sunday is going public with what you think on the inside. 
It's giving witness to everybody in here. Hey, you know what? I need Jesus. I need a Savior. I'm turning from my old ways, and I'm heading towards him. It's an outward sign of an inward decision. That's why we come together every Sunday to worship together. Do you get brownie points? you get stars or stickers in heaven when you come to church on Sunday? No. You come because as we fellowship and take communion and talk and hug and sing, we give witness to one another. You believe in Jesus? I believe in Jesus. You believe in Jesus? I believe in Jesus. We are witnessing. We are witnesses here today. And if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, we're witnessing to you. Our song should say to you, huh, these people believe this. And that's a witness. That's why tents, we're calling them tents during the Joshua 24 experience, but small groups are so important to us here. That's the community that we grow in. We give witness to one another as we share our prayer requests and our life challenges together. Next week is Witness Rock, and it literally is going to be, we are going to do something uh, we're going to act on something, experience something that happened 3,400 years ago in the Bible with the people of God. No matter what you're thinking about all the details and how you get here, let me just simplify this for you. Be out at that rock at 11 o'clock. Do whatever it takes to get there because I predict this is going to be one of the most memorable events in the history of Eastview Christian Church. And 10 years from now, your kids, 20 years from now, your grandkids are going to be saying, I remember Witness Rock, where five generations stood together, babies in arms, grandchildren uh, at the feet, and, and kids uh, you know, excited, uh, red, yellow, black, and white, people of all races, people of all ages, all social standings stood together, and we say, we are witnesses. I'm telling you, don't miss it. It's going to be the coolest 15 minutes in the history of Eastview. <clears throat> and uh, I hope you'll come. I think it's been 16 years since we've gathered the whole congregation of Eastview together in one place, in one time. And so I pray that you'll be there because we need to witness to one another what we believe. But you see, I'm putting away and witnessing that we're putting something away is only part of the repentance story. The second part is there. You see this. He says, put away the foreign gods that are among you. That's not fully repentance you got to fill it with something else. He says, incline your hearts to the Lord. Incline your hearts. That's not recline your hearts to the Lord. Most of our faiths can be described as reclining. We're sitting in some easy chair saying, God, zap me, bless me, help me feel good about you. Fix all the stuff in my life. I'm just chilling here. And, and while you're at it, bring me a drink. I, I want your blessing. But the truth is that, uh, that uh, Christianity and repentance is an action. It's moving towards the Lord. The word incline literally means to stretch out, to reach out, to grab. And he's saying to the people, listen, it's not enough to put away your foreign gods. You need to reach out, take your heart, and give it to God. Stretch it to him. Let him have it. And that's what we talk about during these baptism Sundays, and we've done this for years. The, the church has confessed this for years, that we take Jesus as our Savior and our Lord. That's what, that's what we're talking about today. I don't want the world stuff anymore, but I want Jesus to be my Savior and my Lord. They made this confession, by the way. If you look in verse 17, the people have already said, hey, God's our Savior. Look at this. The Lord our God brought us out of uh, of up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The Lord our God preserved us along the way. He brought us through all these peoples. He's given us an inheritance. See, they understand. Here's their testimony. The Lord our God is our Savior. By the way, remember, I mean, it's been a year for some of you, right? Yeshua is Joshua's name. It means the Lord saves. It's also Jesus' New Testament, Old Testament name, Yeshua. The Lord saves. This is about salvation, people. God has come to save us. Uh, the people are saying, hey, Joshua, we couldn't get out of Egypt on our own. We were in the house of slavery for 400 years, but the Lord brought us out. Right? They're saying, hey, Joshua, we were scared to death when we faced a bunch of enemies, but the Lord overcame them. Look, Joshua, we were lost, but the God, God got us through the desert. Joshua, we, we had no place. We had no home. We, we weren't a people, but God gave us a place, and now we belong here in the inheritance of the kingdom of God. And if you just pay attention, it should sound familiar to you. Many of us in here today need to incline our hearts to Jesus Christ as our Savior. Some of us today are walking in, in 
death and sin and all the pain of our sins. We're in the bondage and the slavery of sin. But by his death on the cross, Jesus has come to make you free. And many of us today are wandering around in the wilderness, lost and dry souls. We don't know what's going on. If that's you, listen, Jesus can get you through. Many of us today are facing enemies, physical ones, spiritual ones, mental ones. But today, Jesus wants to get you past your enemies. He's paid a great price on the cross. Some of you today are just going, I don't know who I am. I don't know if I believe. I don't know if I belong. I don't know if I'm loved. I want to tell you something today. There's a place for you in the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. If you're not a believer here today, my heart is that you will incline your heart to Jesus for the very first time. That you'll accept him as your savior. You'll say, yes, I believe that your death on the cross saved me from my sins. And now I live in forgiveness and life and belonging. These can be yours today. If your heart's beating fast right now, the spirit's knocking on your door. He wants to give this to you. He wants to save you. But savior is only part of our belief and understanding of when we give our hearts, when we stretch our hearts to God, when we incline our hearts, as the scripture says here, to God. The other part is he wants to be the Lord. And they make this statement, look in verse 24, I want you to hear their statement of faith. The Lord our God we will serve and his voice we will obey. That is a statement of his lordship over their life. We're not going to do it anybody else's way. In, in next week's text, you will find that Joshua writes down all the words of the law. Why does he write down all the words of the law? But you think about a long, boring worship service. Just a second, I'm writing down all the words of the law. Then we're going to ratify this, right? But he does it. Why? Because I want you to understand if you follow the word of God, your life will make sense. If you don't, it's going to be a wreck. And so these people said, we will serve God, we will obey his voice, and we incline our hearts to Jesus in the same way, guys. We come, we come to Jesus and we say, I, 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 I want you as my Savior, because you've, you've done through your death on the cross what I can't do. I can't fix myself, I can't change my past, I can't assure my future, I can't have hope on my own, I can't... I can't You know, I'm not a very good God. The things that I'm carrying around aren't very good gods. Jesus, I need you to save me. But I also need you to to take over. I need you to be, be my guide. I need you to be my boss. I need you to be Lord of my life. You know, we we talk about this. Uh, this, this thing from Matthew 28 on this baptism Sunday, you hear it quoted. Jim talked about it in the video. Go, therefore, into all the world making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We stop there. The rest of it is teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded them. That's what, that's what turning and repenting and going to God is, God, you are my Savior, but you're my Lord. What I think is most of us love Savior Jesus, but we're not too keen on Lord Jesus. Savior Jesus, yay, you fixed all my problems. Lord Jesus says, okay, now you can have my marriage, you can have my future, you can have my hopes, you can have my job, you can have my money, you can have my possessions, you can have my service, you can have everything that I have. It's yours because if I run the show, it'll be a mess, but if you run the show, it'll be blessed. Amen? Yay! Amen. At our very best, we look at Jesus and we say, hey, I've done it on my own long enough, your way now, not mine. You saved me, your Lord. Repent, to to literally turn away, to put away God's in our life and to turn to Jesus with our hearts and say, we incline our hearts to you. You might be asking yourself, why Baptism Sunday? Well, when I look through the whole preaching schedule through the year, I go, that's a good Baptism Sunday because repent and baptized goes together like peanut butter and jelly, which is a bad illustration now because people are allergic to peanuts, so (laughs) whatever. Repenting and baptism go together. In the very first day of the church, uh, 2,000 years ago, people were saying, Peter, what should we do to be baptized? He said, repent, turn away from your old ways, give your hearts to God, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
He, he was saying, listen, th this singular act of baptism represents what's going on in your repentant heart. Repent and be baptized. Repent, how do I know you repent? Be baptized. And we practice immersion here because that's what the original word means in the, in the early language, the early church, the church baptized by immersion, putting under, dipping, plunging. Okay? And so Jesus told his followers, as they go, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. See, the early church preached this as a picture, a picture of washing away sins. In Acts 22, 16, Peter says, now therefore arise and be baptized, washing away your sins. I've said this before. We, we look at baptistries. We look at water. We use that for washing, for cleansing. We get that. But this baptistry water is not going to save you. It's not, it, it, it feels like a washing, but it's an inside washing that Jesus, I've said this before, this is normal water. It literally, town of normal water. <laughs> There's nothing special about it. I didn't bless it. This is normal water. But it's what happens on the inside, and it pictures us being washed. Colossians 2.12 says uh, this is an illustration of joining with Jesus in his death. We've, we've done this before. Romans 6, 3 through 4, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. It's a picture that we are dead to us, and we're alive in him, and we now live eternal lives. In Corinthians 12, 13, it's a sign of unity of the body of Christ, that all of us have been baptized into one body. There's not different races here. There's not different talents here. There's not good-looking people, bad-looking people, tall, short. It doesn't matter where you're from or how much money you make. It does not matter. In Jesus Christ, you're baptized into one body. Amen. We're all one. Amen? Yeah, I, I would clap about that. In just a few minutes, Eastview is going to, um, we're going to experience people repenting through baptism. We're going to see it. I'm happy to tell you, and I'm anticipating what God's going to do. Fifteen people have already committed to be baptized today at Eastview through all our campuses. Now, baptism is a visible act in Joshua 24 terms. Baptism is a visible act that expresses your heart's desire to put away your past and to incline, stretch towards the love of Jesus Christ and his grace. And if you're here today, you're watching us online, and you've never taken this step, in just a few moments we're going to give you a chance to do that. Now some of you that are Christians for a long time, you may be thinking, oh, that's cool, repentance for people who need to be baptized today, but you've got it all wrong. Repentance is for us. Repentance is a one-time word used when you make that first decision at baptism, but it also goes throughout your entire walk with Jesus. We are constantly, every day, putting away our stuff and inclining our hearts to God. And so today, some of us in here, we're followers of Jesus Christ, but we need to repent and turn back. Acts 3.19, uh, Peter is talking to people who are God followers. They're Jewish people in the first century, and he's saying, listen, Repent and turn back to God that times of refreshing may come and your sins may be forgiven. Some of us in here are followers that we love Jesus. We've declared him as Lord. We've been baptized. But we're like the prodigal son that, Jesus was or that J.K. was showing earlier. We've wandered far from home. Don't go to church that much anymore. Um, not in a small group. We're not serving. We're not giving. We're, honestly, we're not following God's will for our lives at all. We're doing it on our own. Today, I'm encouraging you as a Christian, I'm going to lead you in just a moment to a tangible way to express, you know what, I'm going to repent and get serious about God again. And then there's others of us here who are, you're walking with the Lord, you're trying, you're reading the word, you're praying, you're, you're serving, you're doing all the things that God, but there's still things inside of us that we need to get rid of. I hope you've spent time this week going, what is it? What's the idol? What's the, what's the thing, the false God in me? Now, if you're a Christ follower and you're really serious about your faith today and you can't identify a potential idol in your life, there's one of two realities. If you're sitting there and you go, I can't think of anything, one of two things is true. You're not being honest with yourself. Maybe honesty is your problem. <laughs> okay? You're not being honest with yourself or you've grown so accustomed to the idol you're carrying around that you don't even know it's a problem anymore. Listen, God wants to do some work on our hearts today. He wants us to put away the stuff that gets in the way of walking with him. And he wants us to follow him with all of our heart. Even the best Christians need to repent daily 
All, in fact, I think it should be a reflexive act of, of Christians. I sin, sorry God, start over. I sin, sorry God, start over. We should do it often, many times a day, because things get in the way, people get in the way, sins get in the way. John the Baptist, who was definitely a street preacher that was yelling, repent, I love one time in the scripture, he's like, repent, you snakes. You don't have him as a guest preacher at your church. <laughs> right? But he says, listen, if you repent, you bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Repentance is keeping some of us from bearing fruit. We're not repenting. We're holding on to these idols, and we're not bearing fruit for Jesus. We sang this morning, and we are taught to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But we're not living like kingdom people. The world needs to see that we're not about the idols. We're about the Lord that we declare. In just a minute, I'm going to lead you through a tangible expression. So now, church, we're going to repent. All of us. If you brought your wooden token uh, back with you, it would be a good time to get that out right now. Uh, if, if you're watching us online and you didn't get a wooden token, maybe you grabbed something last week that's a, a representation. Maybe today if you're here and you didn't have it or you didn't come last week, grab a coin. Grab something small out of your, you know, your purse or your wallet or something, somebody else's wallet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Find something that symbolizes our gods here this morning. Because again, if you come back to this idea in Joshua 24, the people were literally in a worship service like this. Millions of them. And they had gods that were in their midst. That's why Joshua had to say, put away the gods that are among you. So we're ready for you today. Why not put away your past and turn your hearts to God? If you are here today and you need to repent and be baptized, then when it's time, just bring this token. If you don't have a token, just bring yourself forward here. And we, we are ready for you. You're like, I'm ready spiritually. I'm not ready physically. We got towels. We got hair dryers. We got clothes. We got changing rooms. We got people that will pray for you, people that will baptize you. You can come forward and be baptized. You can go out in the well, the water feature in our atrium, and you can be baptized out there if that's more comfortable for you from the back. Guys, listen. If you're not going to repent today, when are you going to repent? If you're not going to be baptized, when are you going to show? When are you going to testify and give witness to the fact there's a change in your heart? See, God, all he needs, he doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your tries. He doesn't need your effort. He needs your heart. He just wants us to say, hey, I'm done with this. Here, I incline my heart to you, Jesus. In just a moment, I'm going to pray that some of you who need to make that decision for the very first time, you incline your heart to the Lord and say yes to Jesus. For the rest of us, we're going to stand here and, and, um, and we're, going to, we're going to break these things in just a moment. You can see there's a little, a little cut there and it's it's not easy to break, but we're going to symbolically say, I'm done with this God. I'm breaking it. And then we're going to maybe take it home and use it as a reminder of that sin that we're done with. We're going to repent. If you've been a Christian for 80 years, been a Christian for two months, or you need to be a, become a Christian today, even if you're watching us online today, can I just say this to you? There's a button there that you can push. This raise your hand. Talk to one of our pastors online today. Be the first person on our online campus that's ever been baptized on a baptism Sunday. Today, God's calling you. And I want you to participate in this repentance as we repent together. Guys, listen. Um, it, it's one thing to read the Bible. It's one thing to go, oh, that's a cool story. And to imagine in your mind that those people were like going, oh my gosh, how do you know that there's a God in my backpack? I, I, I'm going to sneak that away. There's no sneaking today. We're all in the same boat. We all have gods we need to get rid of. Let's do it together today. Would you stand, please? I'm going to ask elders and pastors that have been, uh, you know, kind of recruited for this. Would you come forward if you're an elder or pastor that's going to receive people at the invitation? Would you come forward and get ready? Guys, we got guys and gals that are here in staff. They're ready to pray with you. So if you want to go to a, a lady that's more comfortable, please do that. Guys, um, today, let's repent. Let's turn away, put away our gods, and let's incline our hearts to the Lord as never before. Let's give him everything we've got. 
So today, if you're here and you've already decided to follow Jesus and you've been baptized, but you need to renew this commitment today, whether it's far from God or it's a little closer, let's just do this together. Let's, let's practice together. Let's break our gods. Let's be done. We're done. We're done. And now, let's worship him. And if God is moving your heart, please, please come forward and be baptized. Please come give your life to Jesus today. Incline your hearts to the Lord. Let's sing just as you are. Come.